Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Reverend Karen. I am Reverend Karen Lewis. <laughs> now we're off to a good start today. <laughs> oh, and it is such a joy to be here, to be part of this beloved community. These last four weeks, we had a special series, One with the Abundant Universe. And we have looked at different portals on how we can remind ourselves that there is an abundant universe and that we indeed are part of it. We had some amazing talks by said Reverend Karen Russo, for one, and Reverend Leslie. And we talked about how can we enter into the greater awareness of the abundant universe through the portal of gratitude, courage, generosity, love. And today we complete as we look at stewardship. And this entire series is designed to help us to wake up, to remember, because collectively, sometimes we forget, don't we? We have this experience, this very human experience, where we're forgetting that we are one with an abundant universe. And so this series, I think about it as a bridge to come from forgetting to a collective remembering. Because we have all experienced it at one point. And so it is truly a remembering. Now, stewardship. How does stewardship fit into that? We heard several explanations of this word stewardship, and for me, it always means the loving management of the resources that have been bestowed for me to manage. And I invite you to take a moment to think about what stewardship means to you. And where do you most experience it? Perhaps you are working in an organization that has as one of their values stewardship. Or land stewards come to mind for you. You know, this idea that there is a piece of land that wants to uh, be the best that it can be for the animals, for the plants, for the land itself, for the resources, for people to enjoy. Or perhaps when you hear stewardship, you think about your family. How can I best lovingly manage the resources that I have? I often think about the New Vision Center. How can we collectively, as individuals, as this beloved community, take the resources that we have and nurture them, understand them better, and share them with the world? Because each of us is a steward of this community. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I see some people nodding. Yes, New Vision Center, the New Vision community is every one of us. Every one of us. I want to be a portal for beloveds to remember to remember that we are, as Reverend Leslie so beautifully said last week, one in the one. And I have this picture of my grandson. That's, that's how I want to feel. And that's how I want individuals to feel. 
wow! I love that picture. So that is what we are, what we are looking at. Now, I don't subscribe to the idea of the sage on the stage. I am not here to bestow wisdom. That is not my role. Rather, I think of all of us as being in like a cosmic classroom where I have moments that I forget that I am one with the one, that I truly have access to the abundance of the universe. And something one of you says reminds me. And then there are times where I am able and privileged to remind one of you. And that is truly what is taking place here this morning. As we place ourselves into this vortex that is love. And we help one another to remember that we are one with the abundance of the universe. And so that is truly what my talk is about. So let's see. If I say, I can't see the forest, you say, for the trees, right? And we have this picture of this beautiful bark and let that bark represent the obstacles that get in the way for us to be, to feel one with the one, to feel that the abundance of the universe is ours. That this bark represents perhaps the anxiety that we feel, the diagnosis that we just heard a challenge in the home, perhaps with a kid, the parent. Take a moment and ask yourself, what is my bark? What is in the way for me right now to be so aware of the abundance that is everywhere present? the abundance of love and peace, of vital health, of harmony, of joy. What is my bark? Hmm. As a matter of fact, I invite you to um, either take the keep me sheet and place it in front of your eyes or use your hands, hold them up, and we're going to keep them here until it's becoming uncomfortable. And let this represent that which is in the way. And what do you see? Your hands, yeah. And think back of a moment where whatever was in front of you the challenge was so big that you couldn't see the possibilities behind it. And keep the hands up. Feel how uncomfortable that is. But isn't that the experience that we have at times? And now, think about what is behind those hands. Can you connect as you look with your mind's eye, with the eyes of your heart, can you see beyond those hands, beyond that which is in front of you? That is divine remembrance. And so as we slowly allow the hands to come down, look at how much bigger the space is in front of you. Look at how much brighter the colors are. When we 
forget that we are one in the one, that we are one with the abundant universe, it behooves us to ask ourselves, what am I putting in front of my eyes? Nothing has changed in the outside, and yet all of a sudden we are able to see elegant solutions where prior to that there haven't even been doors that we noticed. Thomas Trowart, the wonderful teacher of Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this teaching, says that when we have those divine ideas when they land in our consciousness, at the same moment as we have those ideas, with it comes all the means of bringing it into fruition. Wow. Really? All those wonderful ideas that we have in the morning shower sometimes, it happens for me. Somebody else, yeah? You know, the one, oh, I could do that. I have an idea. It could happen like that. The moment these inspired ideas land, with it comes the means to bring it forward. And so, if the bark represents those moments that we forget that truth, let the forest represent moments of awakening. Now, I know that is not really a forest, but it's Arizona. <laughs> so, we take it. We take it. Moments of remembering that we are one in the one. That all the abundance of the universe is truly available to us. I had one of those blissful days, Tuesday of this week. One of those days where I just saw it everywhere. It started with the staff meeting here at New Vision Center, and many of that true collaboration that took place in that meeting of ideas, you are seeing walked out today. A beloved poured himself into the remodeling of the chapel that is going to be amazing. And within an hour, another beloved called with a very generous donation to help move the project a little more forward. And then we received a thank you note from a beloved who has been served by the congregant care team that left me weeping. Because what I saw so clearly is that is the manifestation, the outpicturing of true stewardship of every beloved of this community to become aware of what their gift is and step forward and give it. What is our bark? And how can we become forest people? How can we walk through our days, our weeks, our life, knowing that if I have a divine inspiration for something, the how is not mine to figure out. I need to focus on and be committed to the why and trust that the universe rearranges itself that the how is going to become clear. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could walk through life knowing that truly with every cell of our being so that this 
wonderful spiritual concept of an abundant universe becomes something that I don't question. I don't question it even if I look at numbers on the bank account that say something otherwise. I'll just be like, oh, look, those are my hands right there. That's all that is. It's just the bark. I am so devoted to finding ways to bring those spiritual concepts and make them practical for us to walk out, to walk it out, to try it out, to remember when something happens, oh, that is just some bark. It reminds me of a story of a hiker in 1910. This hiker hiked in France, in the Provence in France, through some very barren landscape. And he comes upon a valley, a huge valley, and he runs out of water. And each of the wells he finds are dry. And the only thing that is growing in this valley is wild lavender. And after a couple of hours, he comes upon a shepherd who has some water and shares it with him. And the shepherd knows of a well that still has water. And so they go there together. And the hiker, the young man, is so intrigued by this individual who has clearly chosen a very lonely life that he asked him if he could stay for a couple days with him. And the shepherd says, sure. So they spent some time in his hut. And in the evening, by the candlelight, the shepherd brings out a bag full of acorns, more than a hundred acorns. And he takes these acorns and he separates them those who have been a little damaged and those who look really good. And the hiker offers, can I, can I help? Can, can I do something? And the shepherd said, no, it's, it's really my work, but thank you. And so the next day, they go out, and the shepherd takes his metal staff and makes hole in, holes into the ground and places an acorn to each of the grounds. And the, the hiker says, is this your land? And the shepherd says, no. Do you know who this land belongs to? No. And every time I hear that, I think that is stewardship. That is being so committed to make something better, regardless if it is mine or not, mine in an ownership sense. And so the young hiker asked the shepherd, how long have you been doing this? And the shepherd says, for 10 years, every day, every day, every day. It is a beautiful story. It is the man who planted trees. It goes on. It turns out that he single-handedly created a forest. If you are interested in the rest of the story, I invite you to participate in the Foundations class in January. Abundance, you know, <laughs> because in that class, we really dive into the rest of the story. But it is the stewardship part that touched my heart. We can all understand, you know, having a new place and planting trees. 
But what if we take that idea and make wherever we go a better place? Not because it belongs to us, because we have ownership of it, but because it is ours to do. It is ours to do to take that impetus and the, and the flow of life and allow it to have its way with us and plant it forward. That is what the entire stewardship program this year has been about here at the New Vision Center. We wanted to make tangible that it takes every person each and every one of us. And together, we are creating an oasis here in this Valley of the Sun. Here, where we reveal love in a hundred different ways. And one of those ideas is a ritual that we are going to engage with now. We have here three bowls, and in the bowls are uh, wooden beads. And I don't know if you noticed when you came in, but we have started a macrame artsy community project wonderful thing that is ha hanging outdoors. And here is what we're going to do for our stewardship ritual. In a moment, I'm going to invite each one of you in sacred silence to come up front and have these three different, we have three different bowls. Pick a bead and take it back to your seat. And I know that this is going to flow magnificently, yes? No tigers will bump into lambs. Not going to happen. And so I invite you to come forward and receive your beat. Regardless if this is your first time, your hundredth time, if you participated in the stewardship program yet, or if you're going to do it later today, or if that's not yours to do, come receive your beat. Yes, come, come. some friends in the back row it can also be somebody takes a couple and brings them back we're going to bless them once we're all sitting down again if we're running out of beads in one bowl I know that there will be plenty in the other and for those beloveds at home find something that you can hold in your hand and for those beloveds watching the service out on our patio, there's a bowl with beads right there. Find your bead, take it in your hand, make your way back to your seat. Yes, we have availability right here in the center if you want to come around. How are we doing? So I invite you to hold your bead to your heart. Take a moment and become so clear of what your gift is. 
the gift of love, compassion, of wisdom, of joy. What are you called to contribute to the New Vision 2022 Stewardship Art Project? So that every time when you or any beloved walks by this art project, they will feel the love, the care, the loving kindness that has been placed into it. If you are here in the sanctuary after service, we invite you to go outside on the patio. There will be a couple of facilitators that will help you place your bead into the art project. And for those at home, take a moment and share what it is that you want to have woven into the fabric of this beloved community. You can place it into the chat. Know that every bead is needed to create beauty, magnificence, to create a unique masterpiece. And now we're going to gently stay in this space of loving receptivity as we listen to beloved Mark Arnold and watch the slideshow that he put together honoring this community. Let us begin. I have much to give I know that there's more than enough Some days I've little to spare It feels like times are tough Maybe it's just a smile Or a meal that I can share Sitting with you for a while Letting you know that I care What can I give? My time, my treasure, my gifts What can I share? How can I show that I care? Who can I teach? Guide by the life that I live. Who can I love? How can I serve? What can I give? Abundance is all around me. As far as my eyes can see. Spirit surrounds me, giving me all that I need, as I'm mindful of my good, giving thanks for my blessings, my cup, it overflows, I pay forward what I have received. What can I give? My time, my treasure, my gifts. What can I share? How can I show that I care? Who can I teach? Guide by the life that I live. Who can I love? How can I serve? What can I give? Mm 
ladies and gentlemen, Jack Saba. Giving starts with me, though I am only one. As I give, so I shall receive, cause spirit is never outdone. What can I give? My time, my treasure, my gifts. What can I share? How can I show that I care? Who can I teach? Guide by the life that I live. Who can I love? How can I serve? What can I give? What can I give? My time, my treasure, my gifts. What can I share? How can I show that I care? Who can I teach? Guide by the life that I live. Who can I love? How can I serve? What can I give? Who can I love? How can I serve? What can I give?